Uh, a lot of this, what we've done, discussions that we've had with other people involved, industry, DSE, and uh, different researchers, particularly Kerry Wilkinson, we sort of defined a little bit the way forward. In the back of the final report, there's a whole list of um, knowledge gaps and research priorities, and some of them are quite well aligned with what we've already been doing and our own capability and our collaborations, particularly, as I said, with Kerry Wilkinson. So look, I'm just going to cover some of these in a bit more detail, but basically there's the localization in the fruit, mode of entry, how it gets into the fruit, whether it can move around, sensitivity of timing with respect to berry development, um, grapevine development all the way through the season, intensity and duration of smoke, um, sensitivity or differential sensitivity between cultivars, and then possible mechanisms or strategies for prevention. So localization, where is it in the, uh, this is a leaf, in case you hadn't guessed, and this is a representation of a plant, there's your leaf. Um, it could be anywhere in this cross section of the leaf, for example, the epidermis, the palisade cells, which is where most of the uh, uh, photosynthesis goes on, in the phloem transport out of the leaf, in their xylem, which is the water transport throughout the plant, the spongy mesophyll, which is the bottom part of the plant, um, and the cuticular wax on the top and the bottom. So there's a wax layer runs along the edge here of both surfaces. So and the same on the outside of a of a berry. And also we want to see, you know, is it in the stems of the berry and is it in the seeds, flesh, skin, or actually on the wax? Um, a lot of that. There's some data where we've got, you know, uh, high levels coming out of skins, but we don't know really categorically where it is. Whether it's in the this is very simplified one layer of cells here, but in a grape this is sort of six to eight, in some cases ten layers of cells and we don't know very much about what's going on there. The other thing is how does it get in? Is it actually absorbed to that, to that cuticular wax? Does it infiltrate through the epidermis and into the, the cells inside the, the leaf in this case? Um, or in through the stomata? And some of the variation between varieties might be things around stomatal conductance. Some of them can and some of them can't close their stomata very much. And so that may impact on how much actually ends up in the leaf if this is the mode of entry. We need to explore that a little bit more closely. And obviously the same thing on the grape. And this hints at if it's going into the leaf, is it possible for it to travel from the leaf into the plant? And so this is the sort of interesting area that we're very keen to pursue. We've done a little bit. Mark and um, Lady Nicole Dimos used to work for us, did some work. And if you cut, cut a shoot off and dip it in um, a solution of guaiacol or 4-methyl guaiacol, it'll travel quite rapidly to the, to the fruit. So, but you know, that's an artificial situation, is it's the same if it's being taken up by the leaf. And so we don't know that yet. So that's why I've put here in question mark, in vivo, we don't know exactly what happens in, a, in the living situation in the plant. The other thing is the timing, the sensitivity. We saw what um, Kristen Kennison showed, and you know, that indicates a, a, a sensitive window around the period post veraison. Um, but we'd like to look throughout the berry development and also throughout the development of the plant, because if it's the leaf that's taking it up and then translocating it, any time there's a leaf on the plant, there's potential to be transporting the stuff to other parts of the plant and later into the fruit. Um, so we want to have a look. Can we confirm that this is the, really the sensitive period or are there other sensitive periods? And the current experience in California, all their fires have occurred in regions where the, the berry development is not that far advanced. And so with our collaborations with Ian J. Gallo and Constellation Wines USA, we're looking at collecting material and analysing it to see whether we're getting accumulation of the, the products in the, in the grapes and in the leaves earlier in, in berry development. So, so from our point of view, the fires in California have been quite fortuitous, perhaps less so for them. <laughs> um, the other thing we've been looking at is this issue of, in, of measuring the actual smoke itself, the intensity and duration of the smoke. So the EPA caravan that Steve very, very well organised to get out into that vineyard, that gave us some indication of the sort of stuff that was going on. The only information we've looked at so far has been particulate matter. There's a whole range of other compounds or compositions that we can look at from that data alone. But we've also been discussing with the CSIRO Marine and Atmospheric Group how to measure other compounds, so not only the carbon monoxide, dioxide, nitrates and things like that, or nitrous oxides, but also, you know, um, benzene, toluene, xylene, things like that. 
that also may be related to accumulation of these smoke taint compounds or to um, perceived smoke taint in wine and try and see if we can we can tease that apart and I think that works in quite nicely with what Kerry's doing and what Kerry will talk about in a little bit about you know, trying to identify other smoke taint compounds. Um, and then this thing on varieties, we've seen from the data, particularly the stuff that came out of um, the first project that John talked about and that Stephen has done more recently, shows some quite big differences between varieties and you know some of those may be artifacts of where the they were grown in relation to the fire and smoke duration intensity and things like that. So we need to look at that a bit more closely but if there are differences in varieties then what is the mechanism behind that? And do some of them actually exclude smoke, maybe closing stomata or something like that? Can some of them just take the smoke up and sequester it somewhere in cells in the leaves so it doesn't get transported around? Are there differences in the nature of the wax that causes some things to stick to it, not stick to it, transport through it more easily? And so that's where we want to have a look at that. And some of that will be also with Adelaide University, probably Jeff Finch's group. Um, and then other differences just related to intensity and duration or are they just are they specifically related to the different cultivar? And then prevention rather than cure. Obviously windows of opportunity for burning and especially post harvest. It doesn't matter if the stuff is going into the leaf post harvest because we've seen from the data we've already got that there's no carryover so that's a great, a great time to be doing it. That obviously requires effective dialogue between industry and land managers and fire managers and that started to happen and we've seen quite a lot of that especially this year in Victoria which has been really good and I understand there's a similar sort of thing going on in Western Australia. Um, but then also this possible barriers and this is something um, Kristen Kennison touched on um, and the possible sprays to pr protect uh, from damage against pollution. But there are a whole other range of other things, anti-transparence and kaolin sprays and things like that that we've been thinking about and testing ideas, one of the complications is if you spray something on, what does that in turn do to the wine? And so we want to sort of explore that a little bit before we encourage anybody to go out and wildly spray with pretty much anything. Um, and that pretty much sums up what we've done. Sorry I dashed through it but I'd like to leave a bit of time for, for Kerry to present her stuff before we dash off to lunch. Just like to say thank you, a big thank you to King Valley Vignerons for all the work that they've done, Ian J Gallo for their current interest in the project and um, Australian Re uh, Wine Research Institute, obviously the CRC for bushfires, we've had a lot to do with some of the people working in the CRC and we're looking at developing those relationships further. So thank you very much. <laughs>